What's up guys, DRock1992 here. For this next video, I'm going to be talking about the films that came out in the month of September. Uh, as I mentioned in the last video for the August movies, um, September is the start of Oscar season. Uh, you see a lot of your Oscar uh, bait movies positioned for, starting to get positioned for the final months of the year. So, but without further ado, I'm going to get right into it. So, uh, the week of September 2nd, there were three major releases, uh, three releases that I'm going to talk about. First one is The Light Between Oceans. It was a roman it's a romantic period drama film, and it stars two big names, Michael Fassbender and Alicia Vikander. And... I believe it's about a couple who raises a child who and then the mother of that child turns up later on and it's a hard, they have a hard time giving up that child I believe something like that anyway the light between oceans uh, on a 20 million dollar budget made 23.2 million proving that this is probably gonna be an Oscar bait movie not a lot of people saw it. So, let's see. Overall, uh, for the movie, it received a 59% uh, on Rotten Tomatoes. So, very mixed review uh, overall. The people who did see this movie, in terms of audience... For cinema score, they gave the, the movie a grade of B+. Plus. So people enjoyed the movie for sure. It got it, it found it has an audience for sure, and it, it the audience that really liked the movie they they like who really like these types of movies they like them. So you know when I think period drama, I think Oscar bait automatically. This probably will be considered for an Oscar. Because it's that, it just seems like that type of movie. Uh, the next movie I'm going to talk about is Morgan, which is a science fiction film. Morgan stars uh, Kate Mara, Jennifer Jason Lee, Paul Giamatti, and, and company. Uh, and for this film, um, this film received. An eight million dollar budget and made eight point eight million, so not a good earning back. It, it just um, it didn't make a lot of money. A smaller film for sure, and it receives a it has an approval rating of forty percent on Rotten Tomatoes. The people who did see this movie they um, they didn't necessarily love it. For cinema score, the average grade for this movie was a C plus, so very mixed for sure, uh, and it received mixed reviews from the critics overall. So Morgan is one of the uh, just one of those films that just wasn't successful uh, for the year. <clears throat> and then the third movie that I'm going to talk about that came out the week of September second was. Yoga Hosers. Uh, it is directed by Kevin Smith, who um, was the director of famous films such as Mall Rats, Clerks, um, some uh, memorable 90s movies for sure. Anyway, Yoga Hosers um, stars Kevin Smith's daughter, Harley Quinn Smith, and then Johnny Depp's daughter, Lily Rose Depp who um, look like each other, for sure. They look just like each other, I believe. So, this is going... This movie um, really was a critical bomb. Not a lot of people saw it. On a $5 million budget, it made just $39,585. That is what you call a huge critical bomb. Also, Johnny Depp and Justin Long are in the movie as well. 
So yeah, this movie was a bomb. And it only received a 20% on Rotten Tomatoes, so that too, people just didn't like, um, just critics did not not like the movie at all. Next up on the list, you have some movies that came out the week of September 9th. There are three of them in particular that I'm going to talk about. The first one is Sully. Sully is a uh, biopic on the uh, heroics of Chester Sullenberger. Chester Sull he was called Sully Sullenberger, who was a national hero when he flew a uh, plane down in... Uh, he, he had an emergency landing of the airplane that he piloted, um, and this emergency landing was on the Hudson River. After this, he became a celebrity of sorts. Um, but he became a celebrity of sorts, Sullenberger did. Uh, this is a very... It's directed by Clint Eastwood, first off. And Clint Eastwood, really in the later portion of his career, has been very much uh, popular as a director. Uh, Tom Hanks, the great Tom Hanks, stars as Sully in this movie. Um, Aaron Eckhart also is in the film, uh, and and more as well. Um, Laura Linney uh, is in the movie. So Sully overall, uh, on a budget of sixty million dollars, made two hundred and thirty-three point one million. So it very, it was a financial success. It also was a success critically. Uh, it received an eighty-five percent on Rotten Tomatoes. On Cinema Score, audiences really enjoyed it. it gave, they gave the movie an A. So, and Tom Hanks as Sully Sullenberger um, is get, is uh, meriting, uh, he's probably going to be nominated for an Oscar. From what I've heard, his performance was really good. So, you could see Tom Hanks being nominated for Best Actor and Clint Eastwood being nominated for Best Director. So... This is definitely an Oscar bait movie. <coughs> next, <coughs> excuse me. Next film I'm going to talk about is When the Bow Breaks. Uh, when the Bow Breaks is a psychological thriller film, um, and on a budget of ten million dollars, it made thirty point seven million, double more than double its budget. So, this movie stars Morris Chestnut and Regina Hall uh, as the main actors in the film. Uh, I believe it's about a uh, couple who um, adopts, actually, a couple who can't conceive uh, a child. So, they ask a woman to conceive, to be a surrogate mother for them. Um, what that means is that that woman would carry their baby. And uh, so, yeah, the, uh, a lot of chaos ensues from that. Uh, so when the bow breaks, critically only received a 6% on Rotten Tomatoes, so it got panned. So... So, yeah. Uh, it very much was not not a success at all. Uh, Cinema Score gave the film a B overall, a B grade. So audiences who did see the movie, they liked it. And the final movie that came out the weekend of September 9th I'm going to talk about here is The Disappointments Room. The Disappointments Room uh, is a horror film. It stars Kate Beckinsale and this movie was not a was a box office bomb for one thing on a 50 million dollar budget it only made 5.3 million 
so it was not successful. Critically, it only received a it actually received a zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Zero percent is at the bottom of the bottom for sure. And people who did see the movie, they didn't they didn't like it. They gave the grade they gave the movie a grade of D for cinema score. So audiences didn't like it. You had audiences that didn't like it. You had critics who didn't like it. So there you go, and it showed because it was a box office and critical bomb. Next up on the list, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, next up on the list, uh, there were three movies that came out uh, the weekend of September 16th that I'm going to talk about here. And the first one is a sequel, and that is Bridget Jones's Baby. Uh, Bridget Jones is a successful franchise, first off. Um, there was uh, one movie that came out in 2001, I believe, the first film, and then the other film was came out in 2004. This is the third film in this uh, franchise. Uh, Renee Zellweger stars as Bridget Jones. Uh, Patrick Dempsey and Colin Firth also star in the film. So, and this was a big success. On a $35 million budget, it made $211.8 million. It had its audience and it ran with it. It was very successful. Also, critically, the movie received a 77% on Rotten Tomatoes, so a very good uh, review uh, for the movie. Cinema Score gave the film an average grade of B+, so the people who did see it, they really enjoyed it. Next film I'm going to talk about here is Blair Witch. Another horror film. Uh, starring a bunch of no-names, as a lot of horror films do. They star a lot of people who are not well-known. Uh, but, uh, this movie was a big financial success. On a $5 million budget, it made $45.2 million. More than nine times its budget. That's a big success for a um, for a horror film, for a small horror film. Critically, however, it only received a 36% on Rotten Tomatoes. So again, the horror genre has another bad film on its hands. A bad horror film, according to critics. And actually, the people who did see this film gave it a D plus. So even the people who saw the film did not like it. So it made a lot of money, but people just didn't like it. So, oh, excuse me. And then the last movie I'm going to talk about in the... Uh, here is the movie Snowden, about the uh, Edward Snowden, who was the <clears throat> who was uh, very much considered a traitor for one thing. Uh, Edward Snowden, um, for those of you who don't know, was a analyst, I believe he was, and he leaked a lot of secrets uh, from the CIA and all that out to the public. He was labeled a traitor. He um, had to escape from the U.S. He, see, he, he went country to country. I think he's currently in Russia, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but anyway, there's a big cast in this movie. Joseph Gordon-Levitt stars as Snowden. Also, Shailene Woodley is in the film. Melissa Leo, Tom Wilkinson, Nicolas Cage makes an appearance. <coughs> Overall, for Snowden, 
it was a box office bomb. On a forty million dollar budget, it only made thirty four point three million. So it definitely classified as a box office disappointment. Critically, it received a sixty one percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, so very much a um, mixed review, a passing grade, but barely. Um, the people who did see Snowden gave the film an A overall for cinema score. So they really did enjoy it. So, <clears throat> but yeah, um, another biopic. Um, uh, for sure, the. So, yeah. Uh, next up on my list. Let's see here. The next weekend was the weekend of September 23rd. And there are three movies that I want to talk about here for that week. First movie for that week is another remake, surprise, surprise, The Magnificent Seven. The Magnificent Seven was a remake of the 1960 um, Western. Uh, this is a Western film. The, it's a remake of the 1960 Western, The Magnificent Seven, a pop, very prominent, popular Western uh, back in its day. Um which actually was a remake of a Japanese film called Seven Samurai. Uh, so The Magnificent Seven stars Denzel Washington, big-time star there, Chris Pratt, an up-and-coming big-time star, Ethan Hawke, Vincent D'Onofrio, um, so a big cast for sure. Overall, The Magnificent Seven... Um, grossed a hundred and eight million dollar budget and net ninety million dollar budget on that budget it made a hundred and sixty point four million so it was a success financially uh... critically <clears throat> this movie received a sixty two percent on rotten tomatoes so it's a very good review uh, it's it's a good, it's a solid review for Rotten Tomatoes, sixty-two percent. Uh, the people who did see this movie for Cinema Score gave the film an A minus, so people did enjoy the film for sure. And uh, just another remake in the um, endless uh, in the endless uh, book of remakes, basically for Hollywood. It would be a massive book if they made a book uh, all about remakes and all that, because there are a lot of them. Uh, the next film I'm going to talk about is Storks, an animated film from Warner Brothers. Um, Storks uh, stars the voices of Andy Samberg, Kelsey Grammer, Keegan Michael Key, Jordan Peele, Jennifer Aniston, Ty Burrell. Uh, Danny Trejo. Um, Storks is, I believe, about a stork who has to, who accidentally uh, is delivers a baby, I believe it is, and he has to try to correct that mistake, apparently. Something like that. Anyway, Storks on a seventy million dollar budget made a hundred and seventy nine point eight million so a big success it, it was a success financially critically it received a sixty three percent on Rotten Tomatoes so a solid review and s the audiences that went to see this movie really enjoyed it it got an A minus so <clears throat> so yeah um, Storks was a success. Storks definitely was a success for sure. Um, and then the final movie for the week, for the week in question that I'm going to talk about here, 
is the Walt Disney movie Queen of Katwe. Queen of Katwe, I believe, is a movie that's being considered for the Oscars. It's a biographical sports drama film, and it stars David Oyelowo and Lupita Nyong'o uh, as the main characters. These are two pretty critically acclaimed actors. Actors, for sure. This is about chess. Uh, I know the movie's about chess. That's about it. Uh, Key Queen of Cotsway on a $15 million budget uh, has made only $10 million. Um, so it did not make a lot of money. For a smaller film, it did not make a lot of money. Critically, however, the movie has a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. A very Critics love this film. The people who did go to see this film in terms of audience gave the film an A+, according to Cinema Score. So, the people who did see it, they loved it. The critics also loved it. So, Queen of Cotsway, probably going to be an Oscar bait movie. Uh, you know, is going to be a success. Definitely is a success. And then finally, for September, the final weekend of September, uh, is September 30th, there are three films that I'm going to talk about here. And the first one for the week is Deepwater Horizon. Deepwater Horizon is a true story, a biopic disaster film, and it's a true story about the 2010 Deepwater Horizon explosion and oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. So based on true events. Mark Wahlberg is the main star of the film. Kurt Russell's in the film. John Malkovich. Uh, Kate Hudson also in the film. So a star-studded cast. Uh, Deepwater Horizon was, no matter how you look at it, it looks like it was a box office bomb. 150 on a budget of 156 million dollar gross and 110 to 120 million dollar net total it only received 118.7 million at the box office so not a big success financially uh, critically however um, the movie received an 84 percent on Rotten Tomatoes so, it was very successful there with critics. The people who saw this movie, um, the audience who saw this movie, according to Cinema Score, gave Deepwater Horizon an A minus. So they really did enjoy the film. So this one, this one, I've heard a lot of praise about for Deepwater Horizon. I've heard a lot of praise about this one for sure. Next film I'm going to talk about is. <clears throat> Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Uh, this is a dark fantasy film directed by Tim Burton. Tim Burton's one of the best directors out there, for sure. Uh, this movie stars Eva Green, who Eva Green's best known as um, uh, Vesper Lind in the Bond movie Casino Royale. Probably best known for that. And Eva Green is very hot as an English actress. A very hot English actress. So Eva Green's in the movie. Samuel L. Jackson is in the movie. Aza Butterfield, who's a young up-and-coming actor. Allison Janney. Um, and Judi Dench. So this movie was a financial success, first of all. On a $110 million budget, it made $281.9 million. So a success, definitely a success financially. <clears throat> Critically, it received a 64% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is a solid enough review. Uh, people who did see the film gave it a B plus, according to Cinema Score. So it got decent critical reviews. Audiences who went to see it liked it. And it showed because the movie made money, for sure. And then the final film of 
September I'm going to be talking about here is the comedy Masterminds. Masterminds stars an all-star cast of comedy geniuses. Zach Galifianakis, uh, Kristen Wiig, Owen Wilson, Jason Sudeikis, uh, um, Kate, H uh, Kate McKinnon, and Leslie Jones. So, this stars some really talented SNL. Uh, a lot of SNL people, Kristen Wiig, former SNL star, Jason Sudeikis, former Saturday Night Live star, and current SNL stars Kate McKinnon and Leslie Jones. Which, for Kate McKinnon, Leslie Jones, and Kristen Wiig, this is their second collaboration together this year. They all starred in Ghostbusters together, which came out, I believe, in Janu July, I mean. So, Masterminds, however, did not make a lot of money. $25 million budget and only a $29.1 million box office. So, unfortunately, not a lot of money made. Uh, critically, the movie received negative re negative reviews, 31% overall. But the people who did see it, they liked it enough. They thought it was a solid movie. For CinemaScore, audiences gave the film a B-. <clears throat> so, but yeah, um, so... Did not make a lot of money, but people who did see it, they liked it enough. And unfortunately, as most comedies are, as most comedies are subject to, it received negative reviews. And that is it for the September films. So, you know, we got a lot of, um, we got a few films in there that were... Oscar bait movies that may find themselves in for Best Picture, nominated at least for Best Picture for the Oscars. You may find a few of those in there. Um, nothing that was a huge, huge blockbuster film. Like, like I mentioned before, the blockbusters are pretty much done and over with. You know, the blockbuster season is over after August, basically. But there were movies that made a good chunk of change, for sure. And uh, so um, that's it for September. Uh, stay tuned for my next video on the films of October. Uh, that's it for this video. DRock1992, out.